I now want to take you through some of the articles which have been critical about Facebook, which I'm sure you looked at carefully. Bloomberg article, November of 2017. Let's get that article out. Facebook, the heading is Facebook is still in denial about fake news. Bloomberg criticized how Facebook would use the testimony. I think they're referring to the testimony before the US Senate. As an attempt to cast the stunning number of people reached by IRA's misinformation campaign, 126 million people as just being a drop in the vast Facebook ocean. Now, the sort of approach saying, well, this is only a small number, I think uh, you would say that approach has changed now? No, I wouldn't. I stand by what Mr. Stretch said in his evidence to the committee. This is a journalistic interpretation of that, but I stand by exactly what Mr. Stretch said to the committee. And that evidence is available to you and everyone else to read. It is available to us to read, but uh, I may have to press you a little bit. I know your colleague kept saying to the UK Parliament, referred to Mr. Stretch evidence. But uh, I think the fact that that evidence is there surely makes it easier for you to confirm certain things to me, preferably yes or no. But uh, if you don't like that, then, you know, with some additions. The question here, though, is a simple one. They're all simple questions. The characterization of 126 million people being reached. That's a drop in the vast Facebook ocean. May be technically correct because there are just 2 billion users and there are many posts. But your own Facebook's approach to the misinformation campaign, may I suggest, has to be slightly different from a dismissive one of saying this is just a small, tiny drop. Would you agree or disagree? We have not been dismissive. So in your view, saying drop in the vast Facebook ocean is factually correct, but do you think it conveys a certain dismissiveness beyond being factually correct? I do not. With respect, you have to look at the evidence as a whole not yes. to pick out a single phrase right. and suggest that that is dismissive. And you wouldn't agree with Fe Bloomberg's characterization? Correct. Uh, correct meaning you I answered your question. Disagree. I wouldn't agree with their characterization. Thank you. Thank you. Because the answer you gave could have been ambiguous later on. I definitely don't want that to be the case. Thank you. Now, the criticism that Bloomberg makes for trying to make the volume of the Russian propaganda look very small compared to the overall stream of Facebook content. You reject that criticism as well? I, I think anybody reading the whole of Mr. Stretch's evidence, for them to conclude that Facebook is somehow belittling or dismissing this or trying to suggest it's not important, I, I, I don't think any reasonable person could conclude that. All right. Let's look at certainly a very reasonable person, Senator Mark Warner, 31st October 2017. Senator Mark Warner isn't sure that Facebook, Google, and Twitter have fully uncovered the scope of Russian election meddling. He says that he's not sure that the tech industry even did the fullest accounting of Russia's disinformation efforts on their platforms. Has that been done now? That's capable of a yes or no answer. Well, we've made clear we're continuing our investigations. It's not completed? We've made clear we're com continuing investigations. Right. Uh, let's explore that a little bit more. <clears throat> I'll come back to that. <clears throat> Another article, October 31, Tech Crunch. 
It says, Stretch, along with counsel from both Twitter and Google, were criticized as being non-committal in some of the answers, including on the issue of banning foreign currency in political ads. It, would you accept that as an accurate uh, characterization? I'd actually like to speak to the chair at this point. I'm not certain that this is a fair use of this committee's time. I'm fair to ask me about this. This committee is looking into the issue of deliberate online falsehoods here in Singapore. Uh, myself and my colleague and other people on this panel have come here prepared to answer questions of that and to help the committee understand it. I don't think it's fair to ask me detailed questions about evidence given by my colleague to a different parliament in a different country about activities associated with that country. And I really would like the chairman to consider whether this line of questioning is appropriate. Yeah, okay. You want to say something? Good. I will explain to you why. Obviously, the 15-minute break has helped you decide whether you will or will not answer the questions and the reasons why That's genuinely you not, might not what I'm trying to do. I'm really trying to understand I think we why we are not talking about the issues about Singapore, about deliberate anti alumni fossils here, about what our companies are doing about this, mm -hmm. and instead you wish to discuss evidence given by my colleague to a parliament, to a, a really long, in fact, three long sessions in the US Congress to ask me detailed questions about exactly what was said, I do not think that's a, a good use of our time. I respect, uh, really respectfully suggest. Uh, I, and that is uh, not because Mr. I don't want to answer your questions. Uh, I'm Milner. just, uh, if you want to get to something, get to it. Uh, and then let's, let's have other people answer some questions. Uh, Mr. Yes. Milner, I think you should leave it to us to decide what is relevant, what is not relevant. But if you're unable to answer questions because you don't know or, re or do not wish to answer the question, please state so. All right. Thank you. Let me explain to you why this is very relevant, Mr. Milner. I spent most of my career looking at what's relevant and irrelevant. The questions before the UK Parliament were very relevant in exploring the degree to which you can be trusted. Facebook can be trusted to answer questions when asked. Facebook can be trusted to be a reliable partner that a government of Singapore can depend on Facebook to tell us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in proceedings which, where the witnesses are sworn, or whether you will do everything you can to give lawyers answers or lawyered answers. And, and as I told you earlier, one looks at the sequence of conduct from 20. 15 to 2018, and the very first time you accepted responsibility for Cambridge Analytica publicly, when did that happen? And why did that not happen earlier? And to what extent can we take seriously all these protestations that you can be completely trusted to apply your internal guidelines? It's very relevant. And if you thought that you could turn up here today not answer questions on Cambridge Analytica, and explain your answers today with your answers less than five weeks ago to a different parliament. We are all sovereign parliaments, but we look at your conduct all around the world, and we have to understand. Second, why are we looking at these answers? We are looking at our national security, the consequences we have. By looking at your answers elsewhere, it's clear and you've confirmed, you will not decide on whether something is true or false. You will not take down something simply because it is false. You will take it down if there is a legal obligation on you. And your argument, up to very recently, through the written representations, through the public statements, through all public positions that you have taken, in essence, is that you will prefer to be regulating yourself with your internal guidelines. That's my sense of it. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And that you do not want to be regulated. In that context, we are asking you these questions. If you are embarrassed about being confronted with 
answers that your colleagues have given to other parliaments, you can say so. If you feel unable to support them, of course you can say so. But I think you will leave the relevance of the questions to me and for me to be directed by the chair. Can we move on? I don't need an answer from you. Uh, I think you should move on. The reason for asking your comments on Senator Mark Warner's comments is very simple. The same thing can happen in Singapore, a serious foreign interference. This is a very senior legislator in the United States. He makes these comments after listening to your very senior colleague, who I assume, or who would have been expected to have been helpful to the American Congress and the American people. And we know our position as Singapore in the world, we are not the United States of America. If a very senior legislator in the United States feels that you're not being cooperative, then how do we expect that you will be cooperative with us? But these are issues that we are entitled to explore. So now you understand why some of these questions are being asked. You may not like them, you may not want to answer them, but there is a reason why we are asking and everything is related to the impact deliberate online falsehoods can have on us. To what extent can we rely on you being voluntarily helpful? To what extent can we rely on your actions being helpful? To what extent does the government have to intervene? And that really depends on an assessment of what you do elsewhere in the world. And what other people, particularly senior people, journalists, newspaper articles, have said about your conduct is highly relevant. Let's move on. S Stretch, along with counsel from Twitter and Google, were criticized as being non-committal in some of the answers, including on the issue of banning foreign currency in political ads. By the way, I don't know if you know our laws. We do not allow foreign interference in our elections. So this is a very relevant point for us. And I want to understand from you whether you have any comment on this suggestion. And the reason your comment will be important is this. If you are dismissive, that tells us something. If you are serious about it, and if you show that you are serious in dealing with this problem there, that also tells us something. Please go ahead. And the question is? The question is, what is your comment on this criticism that Mr. Stretch was non-committal on his answers, some of his answers, including on the issue of banning foreign currency in political ads? Mr. Warner is entitled to his view. Uh, as a company, since Mr. Stretch gave evidence, uh, our CEO and founder has laid out a, a very clear plan of action of what we are going to do as a company to help to address the cons understandable concerns about the integrity of elections around the globe, including here in Singapore. On, in today's interview with CNN that you referred to earlier, he talked explicitly about concerns about the US midterm elections, but also he talked about elections in India and in Brazil. So we know we have a global responsibility to do what we can to try to protect um, the abuse, to, to try and prevent the abuse of our platform in terms of undermining the integrity of elections. And that includes working with national authorities, both, as it were, in public and behind the scenes, because much of this work has to be done behind the scenes when it comes to cybersecurity, to do what we can to try and prevent what happened in the US uh, election of 20, 2016, to prevent that happening again on our platform. Thank so you. I now, have you now a policy to ban foreign currency payments for political advertisements? 
We have a policy of complete transparency when it comes Mr. to political advertising. Milner, but we do I have not to yet, insist. I, I'm happy to answer if you'd let me. Yes. Um, we do not as yet have, a, have that policy. All right. Again, remember I told you we have to judge by actions, not just statements. I understand. So as of now, despite the criticism in the United States, you do not ban foreign currency payments for political advertisements. One of the problems here... It's a capable I, of a I, yes I, or no I, answer. Well, it is, but I also want to explain why. Actually defining Maybe what Maybe you give the answer and then explain. It, would you mind, the answer is, yes, we don't.